right, good evening, guys, uh, confirmation students. A couple things here for tonight. Uh, just want to make a brief mention. <clears throat> when we come here on Wednesdays now, from now on, since we're doing pizza in the fellowship hall, ask you guys to go straight to the fellowship hall. We'll hang out in the fellowship hall. And when we're done eating pizza, hanging out there, we'll come in here. And then when we're done here, they're going to go downstairs. Does that make sense? So somebody asked me, well, why, why not downstairs? Because we're going to go have food first, okay? So when you guys come on in, let's go straight to the fellowship hall. So sorry for not making that clear to you guys. Go to the fellowship hall, hang out there. We'll eat some pizza, relax, do some homework there. Then we'll come in here for church. And then when we're done here, we'll go downstairs. Make sense? Also, when we're here for the service, I want to ask you guys to please remain in the service. So use the restroom before. Um, don't want you guys leaving, coming and going during the service, okay? It's a short, short service. We want to stay here for it, okay? Make sense? Okay? And then when we're done with the service, we will head straight downstairs. We can head straight down through the back door here for the room downstairs, okay? Um, tonight, we are going to be looking at Psalm 84. So if you want to put your bookmark at Psalm 84, we'll be doing verses 8 through 12. Okay, so Psalm 84, verses 8 through 12. And then as far as the hymn, Emily, my apologies, I forgot to ask on the hymn. Hymn 413. So we want to take our other bookmark and go to page 413 for the hymn. So we have two bookmarks. Okay. So one bookmark is going to go to 413. And one bookmark is going to go to, to Psalm 84. And then we're on the order of Vespers. Order of Vespers, which will be on page, you guys remember that one? Page 229. Okay. All right. Any questions? All right. Let's stand and we'll turn to page 229 for the Order of Vespers. Oh, Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. verses 8 through 12. Oh Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O oh God, Office him, hymn number 413, hymn number 413.
be seated. Tonight's reading comes to us from the Gospel of Gospel of Matthew, the 17th chapter, the Transfiguration of the Lord. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Arise, and have no fear. But when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man has until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. to fear your name that I may walk in your truth glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit Fear that leads to silence, transfiguration. They fell on their faces and were terrified, Matthew 17, 6. In the name of Jesus, amen. At the transfiguration of Jesus, what we just heard read here this evening, Peter, James, and John were afraid. You heard that right, they were afraid and had every right to be afraid. We too should be very afraid, for we are not God. You, as confirmation students, myself, we are not God. We are we're mortals. We are not high. We're not mighty. We're not God himself. This fear, though, is not a bad thing. In our society, we have been taught that fear is a bad thing and that we should even be fearful of fear itself. However, the disciples displayed appropriate fear. It's an appropriate fear. Like them, we should fear the Lord because we cannot manipulate him or control him. We should actually fear him for his own sake. To fear him is to acknowledge and understand and respect that he is the Lord and we are not. That he holds our entire life, your entire life, your whole body, your soul, everything in his hands. Not only is this fear good, it is also the beginning of wisdom, which we read in the Old Testament. You see, the fear of the Lord hushes us. It causes us to be silent. It reduces us to poor, miserable sinners, beggars. It positions us in attentiveness with our mouths shut, ears open, so that we can hear the word of God, hear the word made flesh, Jesus Christ. This is how it should be. When God speaks, humans are silent. When we are silent, silent, the might, the mighty, majestic Lord Jesus Christ says, though, arise. Do not be afraid. You are forgiven. You are mine. Lord, teach us to fear you properly and to do so with faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. I ask you to please stand. We stand for the canticle on page 231. Let my 
of her rise before you as incense. in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, through your Son, you have promised us forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. Govern our hearts by your Holy Spirit that our that in our daily need, and especially in all times of temptation, we may seek your help, and by a true and lively faith in your word, obtain all that you have promised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lighten our darkness, O Lord, and by your great mercy, defend us from all the perils and dangers of this coming night. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, through holy baptism, you called us to be your own possession. Grant that our lives may Evidence the working of your Holy Spirit in love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, according to the image of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God Almighty, even as you bless your servants with various unique gifts of the Holy Spirit, continue to grant us the grace to use them always to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, 
Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you guys. Thank you to Emily for playing here this evening. Let's head downstairs and we will have confirmation. Okay.